Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome back to our stupid reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. Hi, stupid babies. I'm a schmuck. And you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. If you care. Thank you to everybody who supports us on Patreon. You yes, love the Patreon thank you, babies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Follow us on official Twitter account. Subscribe if you haven't and hit the like button. Why, why, why? It, it helps, helps the, the algorithm. algorithm. And that's all we ever want. That's right. The only reason we are alive is to help out the YouTube algorithm. That's my purpose. Yes. Uh, what? Because Google needs more money. Yeah. <laughs> and consider us, you know, we refer to ourselves as I. We are the googly eyes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I here thought till we Thursday. were the Bollywood the bootlickers. Loaf. We are that too. Yeah. As long as, the, as long as the boots have cocaine. Yes. Tasty boots, by the way. Tasty. Speaking of tasty. Especially when they've got the run of your sweat on them. Speaking of tasty boots, today we got a Karen Johar interview. Nice. And this is actually from a channel uh, called... Masters Union, uh, but this is the business of Bollywood. It's a podcast with uh, uh, no one better to talk to than him, Karen Johar. So I think yeah. he delves a little bit more into the business side, great of everything, which, which will involve obviously a few things: uh, cocaine, yes, nep nepotism, yes, 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 yes. and uh, uh, crime. Yeah, yeah, sexual favors, perfect. Of course. Yeah, uh, but uh, that's about it. Uh, always love listening to Karen Johar. He's such an oh, intelligent yeah. man. Uh, as, as as much as people like to. Uh, rag on him he's which as we know he didn't care as long as you're talking about him yeah <laughs> he's true. made that real clear yeah <laughs> he just doesn't want to not be talked about exactly That's his worst nightmare if you're talking about him he's at least making, talk about him he's making money yeah <laughs> here we go of our new generation movie stars can have the aura and magic of Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, Amir Khan, Mr. Bajjan, Akshay Kumar, mm -hmm. Ajay Devgan, like the Kajritik Roshan, these kind of stars, I think it's the, they, they were the last of the Mohicans. Showing the middle finger to all the, you know, people with logic, intellectuals, critics, they don't care. Somewhere, I feel we lost our conviction in Hindi cinema. And my thing is, Pratham, I never lie to the filmmaker. At Masters Union Business School, one of the most requested courses we have is on the business of Indian cinema. We hear movies making 100 crores, 200 crores, 500 crores all the time. These numbers are thrown around. But very little is known about how the money is made, how much is made, and actually who makes it. So to discuss all of this, I have with me the one and only Karan Johar. Hi, Pratham. I'm very happy to be on your show. And had you told me this, you're going to sound so official and so business centric, I would have worn a suit myself. Right now, just I look like I came from my jog. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Yeah, that's part of your brand. It is. It is. That's part of your brand. Is. But I'm just happy to meet you and happy to chat about everything that you have on the cards. Hey, awesome. chat, chat with so us. Karan, you're one of the finest filmmakers, but today I'm going to request you to not wear your filmmaker hat, but wear your businessman hat. Sure. Right? Producer so hat. Questions. Uh, from you about the business of Bollywood, business of Indian cinema. I want to start off with your journey as an entrepreneur. Yeah. So you inherited Dharma Studios from your father as a small business, small medium sized business. Mm -hmm. And today you have turned it into essentially a large conglomerate, right? Um, can you take us back to your initial days? Um, there's some fact, there's some uh, uh, humor and there's some drama attached to that question really. Okay. Uh, so quintessentially I'm not at heart a business person mm. numbers evade me I'm not like strong with like financial calculations and manipulations like those are things that Apurva my CEO he's like a finance head mm. so he um, is my childhood best friend then went to college with me and then when wow. my dad passed away in 2004 I just found myself very alone mm. I felt because I had no family mm. no one to kind of help me because there was a strange thing that had happened and that kind of uh, envelops and encompasses mm. what I was all about. The fourth day after my father passed away, you know, we have a prayer meeting and yeah. I came back to the office sitting all alone thinking, how am I going to take this company? I don't even know where my money is. I don't know. Because my dad did everything for mom and me. Right. I was 
totally spoiled. Okay. I mean, like I literally one day came back from an IFA award, and my father wanted me to ch- sign checks, and I wrote lots of love on the checks <laughs> because I was so used to signing those autographs. So I was like, I was that disconnected from finance, and I the fourth day I was sitting in my office, and one man walked in and said, "I'm your chartered accountant," you know, and mm. um, he said, "A very dear friend of the family wants to meet you." He came with a letter that my dad had left behind um, for me, which was mm. a very business. Let it wasn't an emotional one because mm-hmm. my dad had cancer. He knew he was, sure. you know, he had a short life uh, beyond after he was diagnosed mm-hmm. with cancer, and um, that letter actually said, you know, where the funds were the in terms of uh, the the you know your mutual fund, your investments. He even said these are people you trust, these are people you don't trust. Yes. Uh, this is how you should take the business forward, and I, it became kind of my mm-hmm. bible mm-hmm. at that point of time. Like, mm-hmm. and this family friend bought it, and he said, Karan, this is. Only because he knows you are clueless mm. and he's so worried and scared. Uh, and while he was alive, you wouldn't have never mm. wanted this conversation to happen because it was too emotional at that time. So I took that Bible. Karen like, Johar is a product of nepotism. Five, six pages of details, Amazing. What uh, things about bank <laughs> accounts and bank where my where money is, where property <clears> investments, <throat> everything. Like it was like literally called up a purva. Uh, who then ag- agreed to leave his entire life in London and move bag and baggage overnight. And that became like his reference point as well, you know, to kind of start. That's how we started, really, Dharma Productions in its in its glory that it lies in today, and I hope it continues. But that began our journey. So um, that's how I started in 2004. And I remember we were making a film called Kal, mm. and uh, I was like, maybe we shouldn't make it, you know. And I remember Shahrukh called me and said, actually, it's a smaller film. You should make it. Mm. Learn your mistakes. Make your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Make your mistakes. So we produce Carl, clueless about like how to produce, how to sell, and then one after the other. Pratham, it just became like that's how Dharma Productions and and from two thousand eight. In that respect, the studio that we built, the studio model that we built, is fairly nascent. Right. You know, we actually it's it's fourteen years old. Yeah. The from two thousand eight. Yeah. 2008 is when we produced Wake Up Sid, Dostana, yeah. I Hate Love Stories, uh, uh, Kurban. All those films started around that time, 2008, 2009. And then, of course, you know, things just continued. So it started from two people who were very passionate, best friends from school and college, almost like a startup. Yeah. Like it's almost exactly. felt like it was like a dharma felt at that time, like we Starting were two in a startup and learning on the job, making our mistakes. Only thing we had was. Deep commitment to the company and a lot of passion to take it forward. Very interesting. So, in these almost eighteen, twenty years since, how has the company evolved? Is it now a corporate, or oh, yeah. do you think it's still a family business at the heart of it? So, it's a bit of both, and much more <coughs> family because I function like that. We have a very open door policy. Hmm. Um, if you come to my office and you want to, and you and you're working with me, hmm. and there's something you need to speak to me about. You can just walk in if it's an emergent situation. There's no email I need. There's no email exchange. Mm-hmm. Apurva Meta, the CEO of Dharma, yeah. is the only one running it like a corporate. Mm-hmm. So I, all of us are creative, walking around in our track pants and like literally creative filmmakers. But he has actually aligned the company to what it is. He has made it corporate. He has he observes casual Fridays. Okay. And <laughs> like 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 so he's the only one. Suddenly I see Apurva in jeans and I'm like, oh, it's Friday. Like you know, the HR department. Yeah, yeah everybody. He has all the HR department. We have the posh department <laughs> and we have the legal department. The, uh, the all the financial he has it all down to the T. You ever been in a corporate setting? Why we yeah. are structured, yeah. we yeah. are organized, mm-hmm. we are disciplined, and we are corporate. So, what is your relationship like with him? Do you guys disagree? Do you guys fight? Oh my God! I don't it's fit like, well in a corporate environment. I feel scared. Yeah, me either. Yeah, because I am. See, the thing is, when you're a filmmaker, there's a lot of abandon in your decisions. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of instinct. Which I can't explain to a business person. No. <laughs> like, uh, if you're a business mind and like I say, I want to, I want to invest money in this first-time filmmaker, and he's gonna like, but has he worked with someone before? And I'm like, no. What is his credentials? None. What did you like about him? I can't explain it. I have an instinct. Yeah. Ayan Mukherjee walked in, had no experience. Everybody said that he seemed. Today he made Brahma. <clears throat> yeah. But at that point of time, everybody was like, "What the hell are you doing? Mm. Like, why are you making a film with this person? Mm. Like, he's done nothing. He's just been an assistant on two films, and in those films, it didn't seem like he mm. had anything." But I said, "No, he has a ticking brain. He's a genius, according to me. He'll be able." So it's like I can't explain to Apura some of these things. Yeah. So he and I are always, but I always get scared of my meetings with him because mm. he pulls me up about my personal expenditures. Okay. He pulls <laughs> me up about my indulgences with filmmakers. Being a filmmaker myself and a director, I'm always indulging the directors when they come and say. We're over budget by five crores. We are, you know, we are OB by ten, and I'm like, 
but why and I want and they're very they giving me their dukh very kindly about how tough it is and I'm totally buying it mm-hmm. till Apurva walks in and saying just you know calm down mm-hmm. like this is money you know these are investments you have to see your verticals these are your recoveries this is your budget this is your P&A cost now at the end of the day that's how you so simple thing and while we're at this we'll tell you mm-hmm. if you want to be safe on a film okay. then your cost your recovery from digital rights satellite rights music rights and perceived theatrical like average theatrical what it can be in the worst average case scenario uh, should kind of equal your cost of production plus publicity suppose my film is and i'll explain to everybody watching this suppose now my cost of my production is 80 crores or sure. uh, so rather 75 and uh, including the actor fees including that's 80 that's above the line right. and then we have 15 for pna which is so it's 90 right. now if i'm getting 40 from digital and i'm getting 20 from satellite mm-hmm. and i'm getting 15 from uh, music. music then i am i'm like at already at 75 my cost is 90 so i'm presuming my film will do about 40 crores okay. for if i do 40 then for 55% of that comes home Understood. theatrically okay right. if i do 40 theat- so then i'm like That's okay i can make this movie india has this so many avenues not just streaming because they have the music rights they right. have the you have That's to take a chance, to take a chance then you have to say like okay now my film needs to my break even point of my film is 80 crores ndoc sure. net box office 70 then that's the time you're taking a risk because in this climate you don't know what will work and what won't but this simple mathematic i always do for a filmmaker i'm like satellite digital music average theatrical so like every movie is essentially like a startup you're investing in yes right so you have always. to do the cash flow analysis always you have to do it and then the, the cash flow analysis is something that apurva looks at because there's a lot of rotation mm-hmm. money money comes from one place goes into the other so at the end of the year you have to suss how you did you know what your report card looks like got it so um let's let's take a step back um you know over the, these 20 years you've taken a lot of risks you've uh you know launched new faces you've launched new genres mm. um a lot of your bets have worked out and i'm sure a lot of your bets probably did not work out as well yeah, sure right can you share some of the lows that people might not have heard about so sometimes there are movies that do really well in terms of perception but they haven't done well economically for you but i sure. tell you what it happened so when when i was making student of the year <laughs> The film did really well. It did seventy right. plus crores for newcomers. It was the number one newcomer film, which oh. had done seventy crores and, and, and had done really well overseas. And it had done, but I had spent like crazy on that film. Mm. So we were down on that film by fifteen to twenty crores mm. because I had spent so much on the film. Sure. So but then I looked at Apurva and I said, I said, you know, we're going to make this up mm. because these three are going to become stars. And he mm-hmm. was like, you're talking nonsense. How do you know this? Mm. So I said, because we, so we had signed them on a contract, three film contract, which very uh, subsidized. Okay. So I said, it'll come around. Yeah. So then we immediately made Hasi to Pasi with Sid. We made two states, Badri Nathi Dulania, Hamti Sharma, Hamti Dur with Alia. We made Badri and Hamti with Varun. And they were at subsidized numbers because that was as our contract. Uh-huh. So eventually, that shortfall actually got covered because of the future slate, the, package, the of three it. movie package. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, I, I remember the downs uh, were like when Kurban failed. I remember it was one of the earlier uh, films that I had produced, and I had really liked it. And it was I felt like second year. You know, you I felt even more upset because I felt like my instinct failed. I was all for Kurban. So mm-hmm. when it failed and flopped, I was like. Shit, like, you know, like, yeah, and so that got me really upset. And the second time it happened um, was when Kalank released, and a lot of love and passion and money had gone into it. And I feel Abhishek Varma is one of our finest minds. Um, it didn't do well, and it was rejected from day one. And somehow that I could understand why, but because so much love, money, mm. attention, time, energy, passion had gone into it, it just kind of breaks your heart. But the other films that have failed at Dharma, I kind of always knew. Like I knew that we made one film, or with the films that I failed, I saw it coming because when I used to see that. And my thing is, Pratham, I never lie to the filmmaker. I lie to everyone outside. I walk out of that room and tell everyone, "Great," because I need to boost the morale sure, of my of company. Um, so you know, I was wondering which movies or or actors have been some of your best investments. Um, are there certain genres today that are performing better than the others? When you're deciding which movie to finance to to create, do you look at the actor? Do you look at the script? Do you look at Or is it like a bunch so it's of a combination of two things? One thing is it's very clear <clears throat> the digital revolution has divided genres. Mm. So certain genres absolutely should not be theatrical. So spice of life, mm. um, human dramas, mm. romantic love stories, 
like just very rom comy love stories, not dramatic love stories. Like Kabir Singh's a dramatic love right. story, so that still can be theatrical. Okay. The rom com would be like Ek Mere Tu, which we made, or like we made like you know Salam Namaste rom com, like that. You know sure. that kind of rom com is now operating only digitally. Right. Um, that sucks. Uh, yeah. Then the like the, the little that intense crime murder mystery, like the ones that are small sure. in scale. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Drishyam has proven that wrong also, but that's a franchise. But there are certain genres that will just not work right. unless you have the big theatrical experience. So the films that will work mm -hmm. will be horror comedies, mm -hmm. very popular genre. Mm -hmm. Just horror may not, may just not, comedy right. may not. Horror comedy is a big right. genre. Uh, big event, spectacle, Doom, mm -hmm. Pathan, mm -hmm. like you know, like war, sure. big spectacle. Mm -hmm. Then of course, the Indian big spectacle, Bahubali, Bahubali. RRR. You know the uh, KGF. These mm -hmm. are the Pushpa, right. the, the the which is rooted in India and yet a spectacle. Brahmastra, film. Yeah. Brahmastra, um, a rooted in India, a big spectacle. So there, these are the theatrical. Then there are always the outliers, mm. like the ones that will not conform to my theories yeah. here, but actually break through suddenly in the theatre. Like no one saw Kantara coming, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, I don't think even. So even, it's a possible even, Irfan would never have a theatrical yeah. release yeah. if he was still around. Probably, it, probably. Watched it for its genius. Uh, ev everyone's mind's blown away by Kantara. Kantara goes on to do the footfalls are close to the KGF footfalls in Karnataka. Oh. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy because the cost to profit on Kantara is massive. It's mm. probably the... I would only compare Kantara cost to profit to a film released in the 70s called Jai Santoshima. Which wow. actually had come so close to the business of Shole. Mm -hmm. You know, it had gone. Similarly, Kantara's come so close to KGF. And right. it's made in 15 or 18 crores, from what I know. It's crazy what, what it did. What And it, the worldwide could be touching a thousand crores. I mean, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, you know, if I pay as a consumer 100 rupees for a ticket, <clears> how is that 100 rupees divided amongst the, the actors, the directors, the producers, the theater? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. a pie of that is with the movie stars. Okay. <laughs> Which should not be the case because it's not that every movie star can open a film at every given point of time, right. but you're paying them top dollar. Mm. So I think I would say uh, if it's a big director, then the mm. divide is uh, uh, literally 50 <laughs> to the star. Right. And wow. then if your director is big, then maybe 30 to, to the, the director. Okay. Uh, and the rest of the technical teams, little more to the right. 50 to that the that new actor? Thing. Mm -hmm. And the producer is the lowest. I wonder how that breaks down in Hollywood. Like the last person to make the money. 50 as in and percent? Same, I think he's uh, meaning 50%. Well. percent. No. 50 percent of the budget? So the the yeah. Right. That They you don't know? do that here. In no. In Unless you own the production company and your name is Tom Cruise. Any of our new generation movie stars can have the aura and magic of Shah Rukh Khan, Salman Khan, Amir Khan, Mr. Bachchan, Akshay Kumar, Ajay Devgan, like the country It's, it's going to be maybe, maybe 20%, yeah, 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 maybe, and the high end. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Today's stars will be relevant, famous, they'll mm -hmm. be celebrities. See, fame and superstardom are two, two different things. Yep. Famous, even anybody can be. Mm -hmm. Like you can become, like start a YouTube channel and you can become mm -hmm. famous. Mm -hmm. You can be an influence on Instagram and become famous. But are you a superstar? Mm -hmm. That that where like people stood in lines just because of you. So that ain't happening anymore. So there are two economics. One is the superstar economics. Yeah. And one Maybe not, non not in Hindi. Economics. Yeah. And so you think that in the, future, in the superstar economic, 60 or 70 percent goes to that. The non superstar it could be maybe 20, 30, and then divided by if the director is big, then the writer, then the technicians. Then it gets mm. equally divided after that. Got it. Uh, I have a question, which is you know, and we spoke, we touched upon this a little bit. I want to double click. Can a movie be a flop but still make money? Or can a movie be a hit and still not make money? Yes. Uh, economically driven. A film could be a flop and make money because you managed to keep your costs in control. Mm. Like I gave you that math. Suppose I, I made my film really tight and my recoveries are high. Suppose I made my film in 40 crores with PNA is at 50 because it's a smaller film. But my mm. theatrical, my, 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 as I said, my uh, digital and my satellite rights are 60. Right. You know, so even if it's bombs, I've already made, made the money. money. Mm. Even before it hits the cinema, and a lot of times money. that has known to happen. Mm. That has not to happen. And you could make a massive movie, and it could do a massive number, but you spend so much mm. money that you haven't been able to cover your cost, and you could have lost. Like I told you about Fruit of the Year. Right. Like so, I made a hit film and lost money. So cost optimization is more yes. important, perhaps sometimes. Like my Yash Chopra once told me, a film never fails, a budget does. Ah, interesting. You okay. know. So um, now let's let's sort of change gears a little bit. You know, other than the production houses that actually make movies, if I'm an entrepreneur and if I want to start up in the business of cinema, 
what are the opportunities I have? Like, how does one start up in Bollywood industry? If I'm not an actor, if I'm not a filmmaker. Okay. Um, there have been. There have been success stories that are, um, you know, really... Like Gunit Monga, for example, who mm. has Sikhya Entertainment. Um, I'd give her as an example where she's really come up the tough way. Mm. She knew no one in the industry. She worked with Anurag Kashyap, made some films with very interesting you, like Vasan Bala, who just broken through with Monica, my darling, made his first film, Peddlers, mm. where Gunit was part of it. Mm. She made another film and she made Lunchbox. Mm. Then, mm. Uh, then when she made Lunchbox, I saw Lunchbox. Um, the film had already garnered a lot of international love. I presented it along with UTV. It mm. kind of made money. So Gunit Monga is one example. Sikhya Entertainment is one example of a startup breakthrough. But that's, uh, Pratham, very rare. Right? Yeah. It's very tough. It's not easy. But what if I don't want to be a filmmaker, but I still want to be in the industry as a startup? So can I maybe have, let's say, like a startup that does, you know, interactive digital work for companies? Oh, of course you can. Uh, that you've gone. If mm. you're not wanting to fund a film mm. or produce a film, there are so many verticals you could be part of. If you want to start like a, if you hire the right people and you are advised by the right people within the industry and start like a publicity agency or like okay. a, a PR agency or something that makes marketing posters and you could do all. The, but the thing is, that's also people who have understood the DNA of the film industry. So yeah. unless you're smart and you come, suppose Pratham comes mm. in and I say, OK, I want to start like a lucrative business in the movies. Um, what what can I do? Right. And I'm like, I would advise you to get into film production. You have to know a lot about it. So right. you say, what do you want to do? I say, but I know tech. So maybe I can start a digital agency. Or animation. You know, I can start. Yeah, but animation is also yeah, VFX. VFX. If you have the right place. So you want to learn, you know, the, you can start like that. You can start so many verticals. Mm. Like VFX is such a big component yeah. today that needs only very technical and people who understand tech. And, and is there a shortage of that? Yes. So if, if there was a VFX company today, a startup oh, yeah, today, that actually did some they could make some money. Yeah, they could do really well. But it will also need some relationship building. So mm. the first thing I would do is get an insider mm. uh, on board with you. It right. just helps. Got it. Yeah. Pick up it's all about a lot. Just get, right. might be very talented. The entire industry is built on relationships. relationships. Right. What's the point? What's the point? Got it. And so now the other aspect of this question is that do you hire MBA students or do you hire engineering students? Like, is there a need for them? In the film industry. Of course, absolutely. There's so many of them in my financial, my own CEO is an MBA himself. Mm. Uh, people who I hit, my CFO is one. And like so many. And there are people in the legal uh, departments who've done their MBA. Mm. Like we are, I'm sure in my office of our strength of four or 500, I'm sure we have 100 MBAs. Really? Okay. Yeah. And do you also do a lot of like, you know, we hear about Netflix doing data crunching and that's how they arrive at, you know, what movies to build, who to cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you have data crunchers as well? So we do a lot of, uh, we started recently, we, I've always been a very firm believer of research mm. when a film is made. Um, Ormax and now Yuva uh, have started like these research screenings and data and, uh, and analysis uh, points on, and on screenplays and songs. Mm. <clears throat> I feel very strongly that the, screenplay and the initials those have to be instinct driven mm. like i don't want it to become so mechanical a process it's eventually an sure. um, you know a form of expression it's a creative art yeah. form but I, but I do believe that when the film is ready mm. because it's for an audience mm -hmm. then you have to treat it like selling it like a product but first go by our gut go by and say they don't go to put everything to research then show it mm. to or max show it to you get your feedback we get scores from them we make they give suggestions recommendations and we alter them and it's worked very well in our favor and so these MBA students that you have or that you'd like to hire in the future, uh, they can help with marketing, they can help with PR, they can help with so many with anything. There's, art, yes. artistic side of things. There's marketing, there's legal, there's PR. There's... But yet, like these jobs are not posted anywhere, right? I think like, you know, but how does know, one find relationships. Them? They're not on LinkedIn or so many It's who you uh, know. All, That's the entire industry. summed up the well, entire industry at every level. Yep. Who do you know? From, yep. From financial backgrounds. Which is why there's so a lot of families. <laughs> they're probably with the headhunters and telling them that they're open to, um, you know, entertain the entertainment industry. Because if I meet all the heads of all the channels at Amazon, Netflix, everybody has come from a formal education, maybe an MBA, maybe other degrees, you know, and that so have nothing to do with the entertainment. Should I assume that you're coming to Masters <laughs> Union for recruitment? Yes, I think. I think I will. I think I will. And I'll be happy. Awesome. And I think, uh, as I said, you never know where you will find the talent or something. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we were talking about this a little bit before. If you had to design a course on the business of Indian cinema, uh, what would be the curriculum? What would the curriculum look like? What would you teach? What would be the titles and the topics? The first thing that I would do is the history of Indian cinema. A little bit, we have to touch on that. The okay. first, I think the first topic or the first part of uh, the course would be let's deep dive into 
the 50s onwards, let's not go mm. before that, but 50s, which was the Guru Dad era, uh, where cinema was about like, where intensity, and there was a lot of social issues in the 50s. Um, we got independence, so there was a delayed reaction in cinema. So in the 60s, we had the Yahoo, Shami Kapoor phase, where movies moved to the hill stations. Mm. Everything was happy and got resolved quite easily in the end without sure. much drama. Then there was the emergency, and then there was the, the angst in the common man. Mm. And Salim Javed created the angry young man anti-establishment, and Bachchan ruled. And then action came in for the first time. Mm. And that also resulted in so much action in Telugu and Tamil cinema. You know, which also the mm. hero hero started right. from the 70s. 80s went into South Indian remakes. Mm. 90s brought back love and then killed action mm. with, um, uh, you know, with Dilwale Dula Neleja, Ki Hamaap Kya Kaun, Kuch Kuch Hota Hai. It, it was a mixture of romance, love and globalization, yeah. which created Shah Rukh Khan. So the history is the first. And so the history will tell you the order of events. Mm. That's the first. The second thing is, um, if you had to really talk about the business, then you would talk about uh, budgets and recoveries, yes. you know, which mm. is what we just spoke about. Mm. Then we talk about terminologies. Mm. What is gross? What is net? Mm. What is entertainment chart? Mm. What is the ticket price plus what comes home? Like people need to know gross, net, yeah. worldwide gross, worldwide net, net, NBOC. Digital. Like what is that? Mm. Then we talk about genres that have performed mm. in the business, which genres haven't. What is now today the big divide, digital versus theatrical? Mm. So there are so many of these revenue I would cover. Costs. Yes, absolutely. Revenue streams. Who are the revenue? Who are the players in the market? Negotiations. Also, <laughs> it's a big part of it's it. It's a big part. Yeah. What is the hardest uh, deal that you have had to negotiate? Uh, every deal is tough yeah. because everybody comes with their defenses up. Yeah. You come. You want to come. You want top dollar. They don't want to pay you top dollar, <laughs> and you have to find a mid path. Is it Sometimes. harder to negotiate with actors or with? Distributors. I'm with actors. With actors, they are the... Because we're there, we're combating delusion. <laughs> <That's interesting. laughs> All right. So you must understand that there's only... Del delusion is one disease that has no vaccination. <laughs> so I can't like give two people, give people two shots and say, okay, no, no, the crazy thing, thing is they, they actually like, negotiate with the say, actor. I can't tell them the truth. Yeah. Rather than the actor's representation. representation. Why are you asking me for this? <laughs> you ask me what you're open to. If you're opening to five crores, I should give you five crores. Yes. Are these difficult conversations? Yes, very difficult because you want to be polite, right? Yeah. You don't want to well, hurt or upset somebody yeah. because uh, eventually they are stars. Mm. They come with fragile egos. Mm. They come with a lot of management. Then they come with then their management comes who are bigger stars sometimes. <laughs> uh, then, and I have a management agency of my own. And uh -huh. the first thing I keep telling them is, please, you must work for the producer. You must not work for the actor. Right. And of course, not an unpragmatic producer, mm -hmm. an impractical producer. But somebody who's making sense and giving you data and analysis, listen to it. Yeah. So in, in business schools, you know, we teach through case studies mm -hmm. sometimes. So I have a question. So if you were teaching this business of Bollywood course at Masters Union, what movie would you use as a case study for the following? Okay. For marketing. I love the way Amir Khan marketed, for example, the whole Raju Hirani series, Three Idiots, PK, even Dangal. He used very clever devices to market. I felt like those are case studies in how he marketed a film. What about branding, positioning? Um, it, 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 it some some happened by uh, uh, default. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, like how did Kabhi Kushi Kabhi become K three G? Um, I called it once somewhere. In R, R, R. Like, why am I called K Joe? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's all right. So I'm, I'm like, like why am I called K Joe? It because Namrata Joshi, who was writing for Outlook magazine, was called Nam Joe in the office. Uh, and so mm. she, when she did a cover story on me, she called it the K Joe effect. Mm. That got stuck. Got now it's just one article, one magazine. So branding sometimes. Cannot, it's, not, it's not organic all the yeah. time, you know. I can create a brand sometimes, but very rarely if I really work towards it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I work towards like my film's marketing in a specific mm -hmm. way to create brand value. But many a time in my in my understanding, it's inorganic. Okay. It just happens as a magic created. Yeah. What about budgeting? What's a case study for budgeting? Kantara. Kantara. Yeah. That's obviously the one. Yeah. <laughs> Risk taking. Brahmastra. Right. <laughs> Massive mistake. Mm -hmm. Huge budget. Yeah. Crazy idea. Yeah. I mean, just left to the good Lord in the universe. Yeah. Uh, Does it call you sleepless nights? Oh, that was one film that, I mean, I think Ayan was so busy trying to deliver the film that the stress was all the people around us. Like, I literally popped a pill every night that one week. I mm -hmm. just, I was just not really, even when there was, there was praise and there was criticism and there was so many opinions flung around. I was just not really, the first time I was like, just tell me if you liked it, otherwise I don't want to know. Mm -hmm. But I was so defensive and so, I was so nervous, so I became defensive. What about uh, strategy? Just the overall filmmaking strategy? Every film should be a strategic film. Mm -hmm. uh, but where did strategy work? Um, I think um, 
KGF was a great strategy. Mm. You know, when they decided to make it into two films, mm. they opened up strategy, an yeah. entire they opened up an entire pushpa, the same thing happened. Mm. So obviously KGF started something. This one part one, part two thing is, is a very huge KGF right, phenomenon. Right, right, right. If, uh, you know, you had to bring in masters from the cinema industry to come and co-teach or, you know, you know, give guest lectures as part of your course, who would you call for movie promotions? It just happened. Uh, myself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're good enough for that. Yeah. What about data? Um, Is anyone does really good with data? Or Max. Or Max. Or have a really, like, informal chat with, uh, with uh, the gentleman who runs Box Office India. All right. What about negotiating fees? Uh, I suppose calling a studio head, maybe Bhushan Kumar. He's struck so many deals. Yes, that's true. If Bollywood was a startup, right, who would you have as your CEO? Like, who would you want as a CEO? Shah Rukh Khan. Shah Rukh Khan of the CEO. Who would be the CFO? Akshay Kumar. All right. CMO, Chief Marketing Officer. Karan Johar. Karan Johar, absolutely. Chief Technical Officer. Mm, also Shah Rukh Khan. I would Great. say he could double dip. Great. Huge technical mind. What about CHRO? Who's human Resources. You can uh, manage people. Who's good with the... It's very tough to think of anybody else but me, though. All right, we'll stick with you. We'll stick with you. We're trying very hard. Give uh, me that marketing job and yeah, give me no <laughs> management. That's all I'm asking for. I don't want. I can't. I can't be anyone for finance strategy, etc. None yeah. of that. So let's let's talk a little about the future of cinema, where we are headed. Uh, say you had hundred crores to invest. Mm -hmm. How do you split it between Dharma, your traditional business, and Dharmatics, your OTT initiative? Um, what excites you most? Well, right now it would be 60 Dharma, 40 Dharmatic. Okay. Uh, but who knows in four years it could be 60 Dharmatic and 40 Dharma because digital is a huge part and it's also much more assured money back because mm -hmm. you have that. While my heart lies in filmmaking mm -hmm. and I hope Dharma is actually 80 and that's 20, but that's not the case. Your, your hope is 80 20. Yeah, yeah, but, but the reality 60, 40. will be 60 40 eventually tilted on one of the sides. Got it. And where do you see that tilt happening? Like, so I think if we manage to be successful, then the tilt will be in the in terms of dramatic. Mm -hmm. But um, if we manage to have pushpas and KGFs okay. back to back, then who knows? Then who knows? All right. And one Kantara thrown in, who would want? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm just my dream is I make pushpa in the same year KG. <laughs> 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 I mean, I go to the mountains and I'll just say, I'll wave from there. <laughs> you know, this year I read somewhere that the Telugu industry did 28% market share in terms of revenues yeah. and the Hindi cinema industry did 27%. Yeah. Right? So if you had 100 crores to invest again, how would you split it between the Hindi the Hindi industry versus the rest the of The thing is, Canada? This, is, this is a hypothetical question that I would never do because I'm not equipped to make a Telugu film. Mm. I don't know how to make a Telugu film. So hypothetically. I, if, I, if I was... Because this is not, but I would obviously invest because the Telugu audiences are much more faithful to their movie stars. Mm. They come out in huger numbers. Mm. Uh, the North America numbers, the Middle East numbers are massive. I would obviously invest uh, if I was just a filmmaker who yeah. didn't have, I have so much emotion, my heart lies in Hindi cinema. But you're asking me a business person, I think Telugu is a far more lucrative industry. So 100 crores you have, where, where does the money go? 70-30? 70-30. No, Let me just be kind. 60-40. Like I'm going to be murdered for saying this. But the only <laughs> thing is that I'm only saying this because as a pure, astute business person who has no yeah. emotions attached. Absolutely. This my emotions, I, if you give me 100 crores, I want to put all 100 in NBC. Okay. But I'm asking as an outside perspective. Absolutely. Okay. Are there any competitors or trends that keep you up at night? Um, you know, is it something... You know, I'm just actually, what keeps me up is all of us who've lost our core conviction. Let me tell you, Pratham, when I started in the movies, when I wrote Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, where a child uh, is reading eight letters left by her mother, yeah. conviction, because actually yeah. I have six-year-old kids, they ain't reading any letters. Yeah, no, no. They are learning about not my ex-life. It's not ha but it was so much conviction. Everything was conviction. Everything That college looked how, how, how it did. I insisted on that summer camp, which has no roots in our society. <laughs> that time. Not and it's not, nothing was logical, but when you yeah, had conviction. I wanted, this was my London, right? this was my Delhi house, so it looked like nothing like Delhi. <laughs> there was a whole Diwali gathering inside, not one car out, uh, mm. outside. You know, there was not, there was a whole Diwali, the whole world was inside, there was not one car parked outside. So obviously, <laughs> it's just conviction, conviction. So there was Somewhere, I feel we lost our conviction in Hindi cinema because we started worrying too much about the applause and praise on social media. You including? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. The critics and what they have to say. Those stars that we are doled out on Friday and worried about headlines, because all critics have now... I thought, I thought Brahmastra had a lot of conviction. Yes, it did. And that's why it did the money. Mm. It had conviction and it didn't. And the reviews were not great mm. at all. Right. Good even. Right. But it wrote on conviction. conviction. What do you think it will take for India to uh, produce its Avatar or its uh, Harry Potter franchise 
or Game of Thrones. It already has. It's become, or, or Harry even, Potter. Uh, Hunger, uh, not Hunger Games. Uh, <laughs> the Korean one. Forget the name. We Parasite. Are not no, the TV show. In terms oh. of storytelling, envision hmm. human resources to, to do that. We have that in our Indian cinema texture and DNA. We don't have the exhibition. Hmm. We don't have the screens. Hmm. You have 10,000 screens. You're competing with 100,000 screens. Um, even more. The world is is available to watch Avatar. Our films are, don't open to those. We don't have those screen count. The moment we have a cinema in every square kilometer or every two kilometers in our country, in our two-tier cities, in our villages and towns, like, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who don't have access to cinemas. Let's say there was mm -hmm. an India or a Canada movie and we dubbed it in English. Do you think there would come a time where, you know... Well, look what happened with Aran and Patam. Mm -hmm. it, was, it caused such a massive stir with the, with, the, with the media in North America to the extent that yeah. it's a Golden Globe nominee, nominee as yeah. best film. Like that's oh, wow. just massive. Mm -hmm. uh, best uh, foreign language film. Sure. Like it's on a crazy level. Then he won, uh, the Raja Mori sir won a Critics uh, uh, Award. Like we're already nearly there. We just need to make many more RRRs. Many more. Much right. more conviction, much more... Is the money there? The money is there. The money it can there. come. Mm. Studios, you have the biggest international studios with us. Why won't they spend it if they know? But we have just one Raja Mori. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> that's a limiting factor, <laughs> the money. Yes. So we have this news about Amazon uh, purchasing MGM um, as studios, right? Has Amazon ever given you an offer? No. Do you think that will ever happen? Who knows? Maybe after this. Put <laughs> <laughs> ideas in that. Yeah. Um, competing with... But would you ever sell? Uh, I'm not close to it mm -hmm. at all. Honestly, um, I was. I was close oh, wow. to it five or seven years ago. Uh, I was worried that, you know, my brand, my company, right. my dad raised it from... All emotional ideologies were ruling my mindset at that time. But in the pragmatic world, me and Apurva have discussed it. We're like brothers uh, mm -hmm. running this company together. Yeah. I'm like... If we need to uh, raise money or sell stake right. um, in our enterprise, right. it's only to enhance the infrastructure of our company, right. not for me to like exit. tuck money away and run away. Right. I mean, I need to make my company bigger. Right. The only reason I can do it, the only way I can do it is if I have more money, money. for me to then take more and more chances yeah. and sensibly invest that money in the infrastructure of Dharma Productions, Dharmatic Entertainment, uh, so I can make it grow. So after three decades, you know, what are you motivated by today? Um, is it revenue? Is it awards? Are you looking to change the world uh, with your cinema or are you just having too much fun? I'm having a lot of fun. I love it. But what am I still I'm still looking for? I'm still looking for like my film, not not the money in my bank, but just that lovely blockbuster number. Like I, I still want that. I still want like, I want that Bahubali number, that 500 crores. I want that film. I want to wake up to those big numbers. Mm -hmm. Like that's still such a drive. It's, such, and it's not because I want to take that money home, please. It's much more high of a film. It's like a report card, right? Yeah. It's like you want to A plus, A plus, A plus, A plus across. Mm -hmm. You just don't want to be happy with Bs and Cs. Mm -hmm. like you want an A plus everywhere. And that's what box office is such a... I've always been so enamored with the box office. Only because of the, the fact that it's such a validation. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a, a screaming out loud um, audience mm -hmm. screaming at you. Saying we yeah. love your work and your right. film. That's what that I really want. That really, I wake up every morning hoping for those numbers in those films. You know, there are a lot of MBA students, students in general watching this, right? What is like your one final message to them um, as we finish this interview? I know that um, many people who are, um, for various reasons, have taken up, um, um, you know, educational um, decisions, <coughs> academic decisions, basis on perhaps their family. Uh, perhaps because of uh, you know peer pressure, perhaps societal pressures, because everybody feels you have to have a stable job. But there are those who are doing those uh, who have MBAs and financial degrees, but they have creative inner kind of emotions and feelings. To all of you, I say like the entertainment industry awaits your mind because you're a strong balance of academia and passion. And that's what I as a filmmaker is always seeking. So if you are one of those people who have a creative bent of mind, but have done a different uh, kind of academic tree, a, a academic path, if you've taken on a different academic path, that doesn't mean that the film industry, the entertainment industry is close to you. It just means that you have to just be more daring with your choices. All right. On that note, um, you know, we have at Masters Union, the way we teach is we teach students by making them actually run businesses. Yeah. And some of our students have actually started small companies where they right. make small products. 
and we have taken all those products and made a nice small hamper for you. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Nice. Thanks, Pratham. This is a master's union hamper and I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. I hope you like it. And, and my um, congratulations and felicitations to all your students who, while studying, are doing their own startups and beginning the, the process of their dreams. Yeah, I mean, the only way you can learn to make films by making films. Yes. The only way you can learn business is by, by actually, actually getting on and doing it. Yes. Well done. So thank, thank you so you. much for your time. Thanks, Pratham. Thank appreciate you. it. It's great to chat. Looking forward to seeing the classroom. Yes. 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 I really can't wait. Yeah. I really can't wait. Sounds good. Thank so you. obviously you are, I have a question for you. Obviously you're a very creative mind. Obviously I know that. Is there anything behind, in the business side of filmmaking that you think you would be good at? Um, The one thing in the business side? Yeah, so the not actor, not director, right. not anything. There's only one thing I would consider on the business side. Mm. Only one. Mm. And that's writing checks for people who have the money now to do the projects that they passionately want to do. And I see it and I believe in it. Well, that is it. That's a producer. Exec produce or produce. Yeah. yeah. Write, write checks. Um, exec produce where whoever the director is, you're there to, to give them the money and also to be whatever eyes you can to see something, to give them advice, but let the director have creative control over everything. Mm -hmm. And just take that gamble of investment on things that you believe in that that uh, see you see that happen a lot with actors who get in a position of financial power they then put their money into projects that they believe in like i just mentioned the uh horror film that we watched unexpectedly out of nowhere and it turned out that andy circus exec produced it there's only one reason he did that mm -hmm. he, he probably believed in the people making it and said I'm financially in a place I can help you make your... That would be thrilling. Yeah. To be in a place where somebody who badly wants to make this movie they believe in and you can fund it for them and then you make money off it if it does well, but you're willing to lose the money because you just want to help them make their film, that's it. That's yeah. the only thing I would do outside of acting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I, I think your strong suit is definitely obviously more on the creative the creative side, side for sure i i, I especially I, if we're talking like cfo no area uh, yeah a lot like a lot of this for me puts me in deer in the headlights a lot of the conversation i could see he's getting excited talking to karen johar about it and there's people watching this who would get so excited about the thought of yeah. the budget and the money and the negotiating that for me is really close to sitting in an algebra class <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No interest. Yeah, yeah. It's it is, but it's important. Oh yeah, and it, it is. And the way he's talking about, you know, he's always been enamored by box office. He's allowed to be. Yeah, uh, he's the guy that makes the money or loses the money. Exactly. That's, I've always said it. I was like, if you want to care about box office, be a producer. Yep. If you're an audience, the the box office means nothing to you. Yeah. It's <laughs> people said, isn't it like a uh as telling the. Uh, it brings more people in and people talking about the film because it's made some money. Because I, I, I put something on Twitter. I said, can we make box office numbers um, illegal to see to the public? Mm. So people would just talk about the film. Right. And I said, e and to that person that said, it, the box office allows people to go see it because it's made so much. I was like, people would still talk about the, mo the, the movie. They would just talk about how good the movie is. Everything, everywhere, yeah. all at once. <laughs> yeah. Not, that's what happened to everything, everywhere, all at once. Not how much it made. Exactly. And that, obviously, that's how Coda. it used to be. That's what happened to Coda. That's how, how it used to be in Indian cinema as well. It's just a, a recent thing that people and just... And American were, cinema. I remember the change that happened in newspapers because newspapers used to be the place that you go to to find showtimes and read reviews. Yeah. Yeah. You'd go to the, 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 the calendar is, section. Yeah. And I remember when there was a change that happened. Only films that got legitimately good reviews would have critics say, masterpiece, wonderful, and that gave you a sense of, wow, this thing is worth seeing. But you can buy those kinds of oh, things yeah. now. It doesn't mean anything. What That has been replaced by the stamps from film festivals now. And the it used to be more about word of mouth. It wasn't yeah. about getting up, you know, toys in your happy meal or getting the most advertising dollars so that you see the poster on buses. And I agree. I I would I would like it if there was let the talk about the business be behind the closed doors about whether the thing and if it was profitable that's important because then they can make more. We've always said this. 
What matters about the money is whether or not that type of movie is going to be made more. Mm. That's really what matters. And yeah. and even then, thankfully, there are filmmakers and there are producers out there who have the balls to make stuff regardless of what the economic outcome of that thing is going to be because they have a vision and they have a passion to make what they want to make because they're focusing on the artistry above all else. Yeah, I did think it was super interesting, though, obviously, the the amount of avenues India has for to make for revenue back. yeah in fact he, obviously they got the ott rights right um and the, those can sometimes be huge depending yeah. on the, the film but they also have they sell the music to t-series to make to to have the music or they sell to see a wire of whoever the right music they get a percentage for that they get a um, satellite he said they so i guess if it goes to tv how yeah. much ever they pay for that and then there's so many of these different avenues you can make a profit yeah on a lower budget film before your film right. even comes out. It, and, it, and a lot of people think that the box office is like, oh, they've lost all their money. Right. <laughs> no, the bo reality, they box didn't. office for Indian cinema seems to be gravy, where it's reversed here. OTT is gravy. Mm -hmm. You put a film in the theaters and then you watch the revenue. And if it doesn't do well, you think to yourself, hopefully we can recoup that on, on streaming. Mm -hmm. Versus... India, it's okay, we've got our streaming platforms and we have our music stuff and we have the merchandising and then we've got the box office that can come in because like he said, they not only don't have the same ratio of uh, ticket price and profit margin that American cinema does, they don't have the same number of screens yeah. available That's to crazy. them yeah. that we do. Oh, another thing that was crazy was the <laughs> if you're paying your actor fifty percent of your budget, yeah, which is insane. That's insane. It's insanity. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not non advocate because obviously we've had in the in their heydays, obviously Johnny Depp's and the Tom Cruises, the Will Smiths were all making twenty million a movie. But true, that, but if, that was that those a... budgets were two hundred million dollars. Yeah, or at least at least right around when you include advertising, a hundred million. Those are those actors had fan bases that would draw people in. Correct. They didn't make that back. That's not around anymore. No. Like they're not making that money anymore. <laughs> well, Johnny's and, and those aren't making that money. Uh, th another thing I thought was. Um, uh interesting in this was um the i i would i would be shocked if indian producers didn't want to get north american audiences more of course right because just by ticket prices my ticket price pays for i don't know how many but like a ticket it's if twenty if, times it's twenty times more expensive here to see a movie it, than it is in India. If a normal ticket is a hundred rupees for right. in India, right? That's what buck, two a buck, buck, a buck twenty five, buck twenty five. Our normal tickets are between. If it's a matinee, it could be low as ten dollars. Ten dollars would be that's the cheapest. The you're gonna cheapest find. you're going to get. And so Which I don't know what be, that is. Yeah, ten ten dollars is going to be roughly seven hundred eighty rupees. Yeah, if it's like a mat, not a matinee. IMAX, it could be as high as $25, 30 25 to 30 bucks for an IMAX. <laughs> Friday night IMAX is going to be 25, 30 bucks. So on average, you're spending $15. That's the average. Yeah, All year bucks. long is going to average out 15 bucks for a movie ticket, which that's uh, that, that's going to be... That, that mostly goes to the production of house. 1,100 rupees. That's, that's, movie so theaters don't make a lot off of the ticket. Barely any, actually. Yeah, no. I've worked at movie theaters and I've asked them that. There's like, it's... That most all goes back to the. That's why the house. popcorn. That's yeah. why the concessions are, are so, so important. expensive. Um, but it's, I, I would be maybe that's why Telugu does so well, because uh, one of the reasons mm. is because there's a large Telugu audience here, and their tickets cost way more than they do in India. Yeah. Um, and I, I would just be shocked if they didn't try to appeal sometimes more to Western audiences. Yeah. To get them to go because you can make a lot more money and profit back that faster if you get a $15 ticket as opposed to a right. $1.25 or whatever $100 exactly. equals to. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, I did too. Anyways, uh, yeah, so the, uh, it's always nice to hear the mind of uh, Kieran Drohan. I think he's more, he, I think he just happens to be in a, a position to where he needs to care about the business side because he has of who to. he is. But I think he's more on the other side. I think he's more of a creative. I, that, I think that he is too. And I think he has a lot of the He's uh, 
70 30. It's kind of hard to not care about the business side of things. As a producer, yeah. As a producer, when you have a company with a few hundred people whose lives depend on the success of your company, yeah. and that if your films don't do well at the box office and you continue to lose money, they could lose their livelihoods and then you can't do what you're doing. I mean, if he wanted to, he could just stop what he's doing just direct. Yeah. But but I, I also think, I, like most people in those worlds, they have this love-hate relationship with the stress. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the one hand, they, they wish they didn't have to deal with it, and on the other hand, they can't live without it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so, yeah, that was very interesting. I think his film, I think, because of March or April? Rocky or his Render yeah, Alia film. Yeah, the Alia film, which uh, is soon. It's the spring. Yeah, I think it's yeah. March or April. I can't remember. But anyways, very excited for that. Let us know what other videos we can react to uh, of his or others down below. Josh!